For patients who are going to be receiving chemotherapy for metastatic lung cancer, and that's still going to be close to half of patients with the disease at first diagnosis, in general, we do start with recommending a platinum doublet combination. That's normally going to be carboplatinum in this country. We'll think about cisplatin for some. And then we have a lot of options to pair with it. In the United States, we tend to use pemetrexid if a patient has adenocarcinoma. The reason for that is tolerability. There's no hair loss, nausea vomiting is less of an issue. Occasionally, they'll have a rash and some lab tests. But in general, patients are able to continue living a life that's fairly normal. And, and there's been studies showing that that combination is better than some other doublets like a platinum with gemcitabine. So if they're adenocarcinoma, we'll usually recommend platinum pemetrexid. We also have data with that combination in patients who are older and in patients who have a, a performance status that's decreased a little bit. In head-to-head -head trials comparing that doublet to pemetrexid alone, the combination looked better as far as response and overall outcomes. So that's usually what we'll recommend. For a patient with squamous cell histology, or not um, anything that fits into that grouping, we'll usually go with platinum with gemcitabine. Uh, sometimes that'll be having a third drug added, and that's the tumumab, but in general, it's just a platinum with gemcitabine. The taxanes can be used for anybody, so the paclitaxel is still a very commonly used regimen also. From my perspective, the downside there is that patients do lose hair. There's alopecia. There's the risk for nausea, vomiting, really no different between the groupings, so that doesn't help in our decision. With the paclitaxel, there's some risk for having allergic type reactions, which can be challenging if they happen, but rare. So I tend to talk with patients about the various options, but tend to use a platinum doublet unless there's a, a contraindication because of other performance status issues, usually uh, other comorbid diseases. Um, and then we'll, we'll go from there. So there are a lot of uh, chemotherapy uh, platinum doublets we use in the first line lung cancer setting. These days, they've tended to shift in, into certain um, popular recipes. And I think in the non-squamous setting, the most popular recipe in the community, certainly in the US, is a combination of carboplatin and pemetrexid. So this regimen um, is very popular. It, it uh, does not cause alopecia. Uh, myelosuppression, lowering of the blood counts happens, but it tends to be very manageable. It's very unusual for a patient to need to be hospitalized because of neutropenia or, or infection uh, or to be transfused. It happens, but it's not very often. Patients tend not to get very sick. It's not like they get the treatment and they spend the next several days um, nauseous or vomiting. That, that, that can happen, but it's very unusual these days, not only with this regimen, but the antiemetics are so effective. I would say fatigue is the more common um, side effect that we experience, uh, certainly in that first week uh, following treatment. Patients come in for their initial therapy, um, which takes under two hours to receive, uh, probably closer to about an hour and 15 minutes or so. Uh, and then they don't have to come back for three weeks. When you get past four cycles of this doublet, um, a, lot of, a lot of physicians will move to maintenance pemetrexid alone, and that's what I do. That's a very easy 10 to 15 minute infusion every three weeks. I have a number of patients that come in for that maintenance therapy. Uh, it's quite easy. The side effect profile gets even better. And except for the you know, inconvenience of coming in every few weeks indefinitely, um, a lot of patients find this to be relatively easy. And when it works, it can work really well for some people. Right now, we're fortunate to have a number of options in the first line setting for patients uh, with advanced lung cancer. Uh, we were striving to all, always find a target to go after. So if somebody has an alteration that we have an oral therapy for, and namely that's EGFR and ALK and ROS that we focus on identifying in the first line setting, uh, because we believe that those therapies are going to be the most effective first line therapies, um, at least for the foreseeable future. Immunotherapy is, has found its way into the first line setting as a single agent strategy, and for now that's pembrolizumab, a, a drug that has been approved to be used in patients with squamous and non-squamous lung cancers that have high pd one expression, so 50% or higher. These are, these are, um, are measures that we, we ask our pathologists to help us with so we can identify whether one of these strategies makes sense. And then for everyone else, it's gonna be chemotherapy. So chemotherapy continues to be what a majority of uh, patients receive in the first line setting 
for both squamous and non-squamous uh, uh, cancers. That could change in the very near future. Uh, we're waiting on data from studies with chemotherapy with immunotherapy. Uh, there, in the next several months, there are gonna be many studies reading out in the first line setting of uh, immunotherapy with immunotherapy, so what are called immunotherapy doublets uh, or IO-IO combinations. So the whole first line setting is gonna be kind of uh, a little chaotic for the next probably 12 months, um, but but no matter where we end up, I think chemotherapy is going to be a part of that. It's unlikely chemotherapy is just going to go away, that it's not going to be something you use in the first-line setting. I think it's still going to be widely used. There are just some questions about whether it's with immunotherapy or by itself, uh, but we'll get those answers here in the next uh, short period.